So we just talked about this diagram and we saw that uh, the total body water or body fluids uh, in, a, in your body is divided into an extracellular fluid outside of your cells and intracellular fluid inside your cells. And we also saw that the extracellular fluid is divided even further into plasma inside your capillaries and blood vessels and your interstitial fluid. And interstitial fluid is uh, simply your fluid that's surrounding your tissue spaces this, and it's really a virtual fluid uh, in that there's many small bits talked about as one. It's uh, we, we interstitial fluid could be surrounding your uh, your kidney and also we have fluid surrounding your muscles that so maybe in your leg but there, there's two separate bits but we're talking about the, all these interstitial fluid as one so that's what we call it virtual fluid. We see that it's surrounding your, your gastrointestinal tract up here, and we see that it's surrounding uh, your lungs down here and kidneys down here, and these are all separate, but we, it's all, we just, when we talk about it in terms of physiology, we, give it, uh, we t talk about it as a unit. And uh, so we've already seen that the plasma, uh, the capillaries kind of gives communication uh, between plasma and the interstitial fluid. And we see we see that down here that uh, the intracellular fluid is um, is more uh, is the barrier between interstitial fluid and intracellular fluid is more tightly regulated by cell wall the, by the cell wall. And now I like to just uh, for those who like to have diagrams and make it uh, more compact, I'll just draw it out for you quickly. So we we talked about there's total body of water and then we see that there's two there are two uh, um, categories to so total body of water extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid and then we see we've also talked about how extracellular fluid is further divided and further divided now I draw through three divisions and we've already talked about the interstitial fluid, this is an S, and I've talked about plasma. Now this is the transcellular fluid. And typically we just ignore it. It's a, it's a really small uh, percentage of extracellular fluid and thus total body water. But uh, for just to give you, for completeness sake, uh, transcellular fluid is really, uh, the fluid that are uh, that are from the transport activities of cells. Another way to think about it, it's fluid contained within epithelial, epithelial line spaces. This include cerebral spinal fluid, uh, uh, fluid in your uh, the ocular fluid, fluid in your eyes, uh, fluid in your joint spaces, your contained spaces, uh, and bla of course bladder, which has urine. And the gastrointestinal fluid, which is, you know, your uh, your gastrointestinal tract is an epithelial lined space, and it's a transport activity of cells. So, uh, and, and you could, you know, if you had diarrhea, there uh, get there'll be a lot of fluid in the gastrointestinal tract, and therefore increasing the transcellular fluid volume and therefore uh, proportion in relation to extracellular fluid and therefore total body of water. Uh, so that's really simple, right? And then we've already discussed how total body water is is 60% of total body mass, and uh, intracellular and 60% and two thirds of total body water. Let me just make this clear. So this equals 60% of total body mass is total body water. And two thirds of total body water is in the intracellular fluid. So that two thirds of 60, that's 40% of total body mass, which is two thirds of total body water. And then uh, the remain, uh, and then twenty percent, 
which is one third of 60, one third of total body water uh, is in, in your extracellular fluid. This is one third total body of water. And, and an intracellular fluid is typically 75% uh, of your extracellular fluid. which is 25% uh, of your total body water. And your plasma is 20% of extracellular fluid. And this is uh, about 7% of total body of water. And transcellular fluid is 5% of extracellular fluid. And this is 1% of total body of water. So you see that 75 plus 20 plus 5 equals 100% uh, of ECF. So this, this Interstitial fluid plus plasma plus transcellular fluid equals the total of extracellular fluid. And you can do the math to calculate the percentages of total body of water. So now we're going to talk about, go down, we're going to talk about, we've talked about compartments, fluid compartments, and now we will talk about. Uh, a simple pr uh, principle that we, I think we all intuitively uh, understand, and it's the principle of uh, mass balance. And this is an important principle because it allows, this will allow us to calculate uh, volumes within different compartments of our body. Uh, volume of plasma, volume of extracellular fluid, or total body of water, uh, total body volume uh, uh, of fluids. And so mass balance just simply means the mass of the system is, re is constant. So mass of the system equals constant. And now suppose this is our system, is our needle with uh, some fluid and indicator in it, uh, some indicator of known concentration, and, our, and a container of fluid. So this is once is our system before and after. And obviously, so mass uh, mass initially equals mass finally. So, because this system, this this flu, this mass here is the same. We just we just poured this fluid into this container. So, it's, and another way to talk about mass is a uh, volume times concentration. So volume initially times concentration initially equals um, volume finally times concentration finally. So this is this is, volume is measured in uh, liters times concentration is in kilograms over liters. So we see it's kilograms equals kilograms. Uh, if you if you if you remember the units, it'll be easy. Um, and so now let, let's let's give an example. Well, how how can we use this information? Well, we could see that if we're trying to con figure out the volume of a fluid in this container, we can see that we could manipulate this equation to arrive at volume of fluid. If you divide by the concentration of fluid, we see that we have a volume initially. Uh, and, 
times the concentration initially divided by concentration finally gives you the final uh, volume. So we have, if we have a concentration, if we know the concentration of this fluid and the volume of this fluid in the needle, and then we know the con uh, we we measure this concentration in the uh, in this container, we could arrive at the uh, final volume of the container. So it's a it's an important uh, principle, and we'll use this now. Uh, we will. I'll show you how you could use this information to um, understand how how uh, measuring compartment value uh, values uh, occurs in the, in the lab. 